So YesWorth Campaigns tool can be accessed from the top menu here. And this will launch in a separate window, but you'll remain within your Gmail. So the Campaigns tool is YesWorth Cadence tool. And it allows you to reach out to a large group of recipients. You're able to automate this initial outreach. And then you're also able to automate that follow-up. Now, there are various options available within this tool, so you do have the ability to send these emails out manually if you choose that option. But of course, if you're reaching out to a large group of recipients, the ability to do this automatically through an automated process is ideal. Now, you're able to do this at scale without sacrificing personalization and authenticity. So, Similar to with templates, Campaigns allows you to use merge fields to personalize your outreach, address your recipients by name, and in turn have that authentic communication style with them. And once you create a campaign, you're able to use it over and over again with a new group of recipients. So you'll notice here in this main dashboard that I have a list of all the campaigns that I have access to. And even once I've used them, I'm able to click this button over here and add a new group of recipients to an existing campaign. Now, I think the best way to go about explaining campaigns is to walk through the creation of a new campaign. So to do that, you'll click the new campaign button in the upper right. And then you'll be prompted to create your outreach approach. So the first step is giving your campaign a name, and this is just an internal name so that you're able to find the campaign later. Um, since you are able to reuse campaigns, it may be helpful to name your campaign something that hints at what the content includes so you know what you're adding users to. So once you've given the campaign a name, you'll then be prompted to add your recipients. And there's a few different ways to do this depending on what subscription you have with Yesware. So if you are a premium user, or if you're a pro user using the uh, preview of this tool, you'll probably want to upload a CSV file with your recipients. And any field in that CSV file, you'll later be able to reference in the body of a campaign email. So for instance, if you want to reference a recipient's name or company, you'll just want to make sure there is a field for that in the CSV file and that every recipient in your list has that field populated. Now, those of you who are enterprise customers and have the Salesforce integration enabled, are also able to add recipients directly from Salesforce. So if that is the way you are adding your recipient list, you have the option to search Salesforce directly for particular recipients or import a full list. Now let's say that you have some downtime, you want to start working on the creation of a campaign, but you haven't finalized your list of recipients just yet. That's completely fine. You're actually able to skip this step and just go about creating the campaign blueprint. You would then save the campaign without starting it, and you could come back at a later time and actually add your recipient list. So down here, when you go to compose your first touch, you'll see a few options when it comes to touch type. Now the default touch type is going to be an automated email. And this is really your typical set it and forget it email drip campaign. So once you select the start date and time, this campaign will be sent to all recipients in your list automatically. So you don't need to go in here and remember to click send for each of them. Now, alternatively, YesWord does offer a manual email touch. And in this case, what will happen is you'll be reminded back in your Gmail to send the campaign email. So every recipient in your campaign will receive a touch card. So back in your Gmail inbox, over in the Yesware sidebar here, there's a campaign section. And if you do set your campaign up to send manually, you'll see in this sidebar 
a touch card reminding you to send that email. So every single recipient will receive a touch card. You'll have to actually click the email button here. And what this will do is it will populate a new email and you'll be able to just click send. So it does still save you a lot of time. The only thing there is that if you are sending this campaign to a large group of recipients, it's fairly time consuming. So it saves you time in that the content will be pre-created for you. You don't have to sit there and manually type it out, but it's better suited for smaller campaigns. Next up is the phone call touch type. And in this case, since YesWord does not currently have a dialer, the phone call touches are going to work fairly similar to manual emails. So they'll appear in that same sidebar and it will work as a reminder to actually make the phone call. So YesWord will not make the phone call for you. You'll be prompted to make the phone call and then you're able to add any notes if you're a Salesforce customer to sync those back to Salesforce. Next up is a custom task type, and this is virtually identical to a phone call. It will appear in the sidebar, and it will just remind you to take a certain action. So let's say you wanted to use social media outreach, and you wanted to just have a reminder in that sidebar to do so. This is a great option there. And then the final two touch types are the connect on sales navigator or send an email on sales navigator. And both of these will also work in that same sidebar. You'll have to set up the Sales Navigator integration that YesWare offers, so you do need a separate Sales Navigator license. And then you'll be able to send in mail or connect right from the sidebar. So just to quickly show you an example of a campaign, I'm going to add a demo CSV file that I have and walk through some of the options available for setting that initial email and then automating your follow-up. So any column that I have in this CSV that I've brought in, I'm able to reference in the body of my outreach. So I'm able to address each recipient by their first name. I can make reference of their company and then also their title. Now when you scroll down to actually create your plan of attack or your series of emails, you'll be able to either manually type this out using the merge fields. This process will be very similar to the process we went through when creating a template. And then alternatively, you are able to use a template. So if you have a template that you've created ahead of time, you know that the merge fields are an exact match to the column heading in, a CS in that CSV, you can do it that way instead. Today, I'm just going to walk through manually creating it to show you the different options available. So let's say this is just a basic holiday outreach campaign. Rather than writing something generic to all the recipients in this campaign, I'm actually able to use that merge field button. And then every single column that I've brought in from that CSV file is going to appear in this list as an option for a merge field. So this is just a great way to ensure that they're an exact match because only the column headings will appear in this list. So then I'm just going to create a very simple email campaign to show you what this looks like. So I'll insert the merge field for company. And then let's say I want to insert my meeting link. Down here, you'll notice that the meeting scheduler button is available. So I'm able to insert my calendar link if I want to offer up the recipient's ability to book a meeting. And then lastly, YesWare also allows you to include your regular Gmail signature in the body of a campaign email. So if you'd like to do that, you'll just need to toggle this on. Now a few other options just to quickly go through. You are able to add attachments to a campaign email. You're also able to insert images. And then as I mentioned, you're able to use a template instead of manually drafting the email here.
Next, you'll just need to decide when you want this first email to go out, assuming you're using an automated touch type. You're able to select any time in the future. The default will be to send this first email immediately once you start the campaign. But selecting this dropdown is going to allow you to select any date in the future. And once you create that first touch, you're either able to start the campaign, so you are able to create single touch campaigns, or you can add another touch. If you click to add another touch, you'll then be prompted to select the time in between touches. So yes, where campaigns are based on a cadence rather than selecting the specific date for follow-up touches. And again, this is just so you can come back at any time in the future and reuse that same campaign. You'll notice in touch two that the subject line has been automatically populated for us. And this is so the campaign emails will thread in the recipient's inbox. And if you end up having a conversation back and forth with them, the thread will continue. So if you don't want touch one and touch two to be related in the recipient's inbox, you're able to completely change this subject to anything you'd like. Otherwise, we do recommend leaving this. The process will then be exactly the same for any follow-up touches, so you're able to make use of those same merge fields. You can then insert your meeting link if you want. And since the date has been decided based on the cadence that we selected, you'll just need to select the time that you want this to send out. Now, aside from customizations via these merge fields, you're also able to further personalize your campaign emails using the Preview and Personalize tab. So if you click into this, you'll see a listing of all the recipients in your campaign, and clicking on their names will actually show what their campaign touch will look like. So it will show what the email looks like with their merge fields populated. Now, if you click into a particular recipient's touch, you're able to add further customization. So let's say that I wanted to congratulate this recipient on a recent promotion. I'm able to add that custom text and then down here, apply the personalization. Once I do that, only that recipient will receive that custom touch. And this is indicated with the little asterisk icon over next to their email address. And that personalization option is available in every touch of the campaign, and you're able to change it up for every recipient. So let's say you're sending a smaller campaign and it's feasible to actually go in and customize that for every recipient. That's certainly an option, and it's a great way to improve your open rate and your reply rate. So from there, you would just scroll down to the bottom. Assuming this campaign is done, you don't want to add any additional touches. You just want to confirm the settings here. The default setting will be to remove a recipient after a connection. This means that if the recipient replies to an email in the campaign, they'll be removed from receiving future touches. You're also given the option to track links and attachments if you've included them in your campaign. And then finally, you'll just need to select this option here. Um, and this just notes that yes, we're works within your Gmail daily send limit. So we're not able to exceed that limit. If you set up a very large campaign, you will be cut off from sending. From there, you would click to start the campaign. And depending on the date that you had selected for touch one, the campaign emails would automatically start sending out at that time. Now back in your main campaigns library, you're able to monitor the progress of a campaign. So in this main view, you'll be able to see how many total recipients there are in a campaign, how many of those are actually in progress or still set to receive certain touches. And then you'll see overall statistics on the open rate, the click rate for, for any links you're tracking, and then the connect rate. Yes, we will also report on any meetings that have been booked if you're including your meeting scheduler.
Now clicking into a campaign, you'll be able to actually see where each recipient is in the campaign and how they have interacted with your content. So if you click on the recipients tab, this will bring up a listing of the recipients in your campaign and what their current status is. You'll also be able to see their interactions. So if they've opened your email, you'll be able to see that here.